And you do the whole mammogram shuffle where she's like, stick your bum out, put your arm there, and do that, and you just end up in this like concocted mess. Just burst into tears. Big sobbing, crying tears. Hi everyone, how are you doing? We're currently in lockdown here in England still, and it was like week eight. 800 or something, I don't know. I've got no sense of time whatsoever anymore. So I wanted to tune in with you guys because I know I haven't been in here for a while and recently I'm in a bit of limbo on top of lockdown because uh, I went for my mammogram and I didn't get the news I was expecting, to be honest. So last week I went up for my yearly mammogram and that room on its own just brings back all the memories it's three years ago that that all happened and it was just all looks the same except everything's a bit more socially distant and i just think ah oh. sometimes now that my hair's back and everything um, and i'm feeling on top of my game again and i'm starting my own business online and everything I'm busy I'm doing loads of stuff I'm reading books I used to read it's great I'm back to my old self feels brilliant and then I have to go back there for my yearly test and I'm like oh, sometimes I forget it's so easy to almost forget that that all happened or to just think it must have been someone else's life can't have happened to me if I don't, sometimes if I, I, like, my stupid phone brings up, oh, this is what you were doing last year, kind of memories. Um, and it, it threw out one of the pictures with me with no hair. And I was like, oh my God, if it weren't for pictures like that, I would probably not believe it had all happened. It feels so long ago. So to go back to that room where it all began was uh, crazy enough. And then I went in and had the mammogram and you do the whole mammogram shuffle where she's like, stick your bum out, put your arm there and do that. And you just end up in this like concocted mess. Um, it's not that bad, but it's quite funny. And I was just like, the quicker you do as you're told, the quicker you get out. So just do it. Um, and she was a very young nurse uh, and she didn't really ask the right questions, I feel. She was lovely, of course. But she asked, had I had, because they don't scan the side that had the cancer, they scan the good side that was always well behaved and clear. Um, and she said, have you had reconstructive surgery that side? And I said, no, because I haven't. And she like, that ticked the box. I said, but I have had surgery that side because I had a lift to try and match them up. It didn't work. But, um, that didn't count because it wasn't the question she'd asked, so she didn't note that. So I'm hoping that is uh, part of the story. But, so I went up there, came out, 10 minutes later I was out again. I was like, what is the whole point in all of that? What's the point? Um, and then two days later, I get my letter in the post from the hospital and I was fully expecting it to be you're all clear, off you go, on your merry way, and it wasn't. And it was the biggest shock I could have had. I was on, I was just sat on my, at my dining room table, because there's nowhere else to go, um, and my little five-year-old girl was opposite me, and I just burst into tears. Big sobbing, crying tears, because I just didn't expect a letter to say, there is an area in your breast that I would like to look at in more detail with further x-rays and an ultrasound. And I just thought, been down that road before. I just, I think obviously it's wrong. Um, I just think it can't be anything. It just can't, it can't because I've changed so much. I go out walking, I've got, <laughs> I, I eat so much less meat, I drown in green tea, I feed my gut biome, I eat my greens, I eat, um, I drink, I mix into my porridge matcha tea, which switches off, it's supposed to switch off the hair to um, protein. I have berries and mushroom, in my porridge in the morning, I ha I do so much. 
my complete belief I was reading a book called Radical Remissions it's excellent such a good book way better than I thought it would be and in there it says if you have a if you have black mold in your cellar you don't just clean the mold and leave it as everything as it was because the mold will come back you've kept the conditions in place for the mold to come back you Instead, you clean it properly, you change the conditions, you open the cur curtains or whatever and let the light in, you um, make it so that the mould can't come back. And that's what I feel I have done. I've taken up yoga, I breathe a lot more. I um, thought someone was coming in the door. I do, I've done so much, I feel. Maybe not enough, but I've done, I feel I've done a lot. And to get a letter like that, I just think, oh. I was taught out of um, like pure chance, my my plastic surgeon rang today uh, to see where, because I couldn't go see him because of the virus. So he rang me instead and he, he said, is it all right? I was like, not really, but whatever. Um, I mean, it's healed fine, but it's not perfect. They're not the same size, whatever. And I'm like, I'm just not going back. That's it, I've had enough, I'm done, I'm moving on, can't be bothered, I don't have time to go back to hospital to do surgery that I don't need anymore. And I said, they found something on my mammogram. Mammogram? On the good side. Is it possible that it's scar tissue from the surgery you did? And he said, very possibly. That is quite likely, as soon as you go in, um, and say that you have had surgery that side, it might be the scar tissue from that showing up on their mammogram that could make them wonder what it was. And if the nurse didn't note down that I had had some surgery that side, then I guess that's what they could be seeing. He wasn't, wouldn't say, yeah, that's definite, because that would, would have been awful for him to say if it was something. Um, of course, I've Googled it. Uh, and it's, it says it's very low chance of it coming back on the opposite side. Um, but I just think dismissing it in my head, I've been down that road before and I was shocked last time it happened. So I don't want to just say it's nothing because it just sets me up for a, a bigger shock if it is. So I go back in on Monday for all my stupid ultrasounds and x-rays and I really hope I don't have to have any biopsies because they were horrible and hopefully they will know right there and then on the spot and that will be great because at the moment I just all those fears just come straight back um like ah uh, it's everywhere I saw one day on a I, I read it somewhere it's like Having had cancer, it's like someone following you around with a gun to your head and they'll say, I'm not going to pull the trigger, but I might, and but I'll follow you around forever. And you just have that fear of it coming back at any point or not, who knows? And it's just always there. And even to the point where my little girl, um, when she says things like she's going to get married and stuff, I'm like, oh, I just hope I'm there to see it. I will be. I totally will be because I've changed. I've done so much, but that fear is never going to go away. And it's just always there at the back of your mind. Some days it's less, some days it's more. And to get a, I thought I was past it all. And then to get a letter like that, just didn't expect that whatsoever. So I'll keep you posted. I'll see what they say and as soon as I know I'm going to let you guys know but I just wanted to come back in here to say three days three years down the road you're never really out of it it's never gone it's never gone all you can do is do your best and make sure you change all the conditions that it could possibly need so it can't come back. My health is in my hands and I'm not, it's not bad luck or um, 
out of my hands in any way. I feel I am totally in control of it all. I just need to know what I'm up against. And if I go clear this time, this has been a hell of a reminder to stay on course and keep every day doing something that's good in some way, helping my mindset, helping making sure I'm calm and healing because you can never heal if you are in fight or flight in any way. It's like a seesaw. So parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems, you, you cannot heal if you are in uh, fight or flight mode. You must relax and breathe or just meditate if you can or do something that just switches your body into parasympathetic. Um, just breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth automatically clicks your body into that. So breathing. Um, but I just think, man, well, what's the point in saying any of this if it's come back? Because it didn't work. It just makes me doubt everything. I'll get you posted. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Hey, so I'm back in from my appointment. Uh, man, it was just such a, a rigmarole. It's so weird being back here at this hospital. It just brings back so many memories. But I'm so grateful that it was clear. Um, I went in and this time I had a really, really experienced uh, mammogram nurse. Uh, and oh my gosh, she meant it. There was no... There was no niceties this time. It was a really, the mammogram thing they used to squeeze was really small. So that it was really high pressure and it just kept going and going. She was nice. She was like, we'll release it as soon as we possibly can, of course. But ow, I mean, that was really a really, really serious one. Wow. But there was no... Um, no biopsies or anything. As soon as I walked into the mammogram room, I could see my old mammogram up on the roo on on the light board, um, and I could straight away see that the scar areas were exactly where I think the surgeon would have gone in. So I could see that straight away. I was like, oh, I really hope that is the scar tissue that they think they they're looking at. Um, I said, is that the bits you're looking at? And she said, yes. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's scar tissue. Um, and then it got given straight to a doctor that was right there waiting. Um, she left me waiting for quite a little while, longer, probably like five minutes, but it felt like ever, um, forever. And she came back and she went, sorry to have dragged you in. Sorry to have worried you. Uh, it's all clear on your merry way. I was like, oh my gosh, really seriously. Oh my God. That was like, whew, glad you're glad they're on it. Glad they're watching for stuff. But, oh, man. But, yeah, so glad to be out of there. The sun was shining. Absolutely beautiful day. It's just times like this that just bring it all flooding back. And to come back into this hospital where it all began, into that room where it all started, it was just... And COVID rules as well, so no one's allowed to come with me, so I'm all by myself. It's just, like, seriously... But makes you appreciate it all again, brings it all back that you're happy to be alive and I've made it through and phew, that's all I have to say. Keep doing whatever you're doing that you feel is healthy. I knew it wasn't true deep down, but still, oh my God, what a flipping day. Anyway, as we were. That was a nice hiccup, nice scare of the day, scare of the year on top of everything, but few. So as you were, all's good and I shall see you in the next one. Take care.